Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the two-dimensional Poisson kernel, written up here as PR of theta, equal to the sum as n goes from minus infinity to infinity, of r to the absolute value of n, you'll see why that's important in a second, times e to the i n theta, and you typically see this kernel inside an integral. So if we have some integral like 0 to 2 pi, of some function of theta times the Poisson kernel. First thing that you'd notice when you actually try to evaluate this integral is that we don't have a closed form expression for the sum. We want to evaluate the sum first and then do the integral. So let's see if we can find a closed form expression for this. We are going to begin as the absolute value hints by writing this as a sum of two sums, the negative and the positive values write this as n goes from minus infinity to minus 1 plus sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of our kernel here on the absolute value of n e to the i n theta. When we do this we are going to get rid of the absolute value. So now we have the first sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. Now we're going to have r to the minus n, sorry, the whole point of the absolute value is to get rid of the minus signs, r to the n e to the minus i n theta. There's another sum. This then goes from 0 to infinity of r to the n e to the i n theta. And you might notice that we can write this as a geometric series, two series actually going from 1 to infinity and we have r e to the minus i theta to the n. Second sum n goes from 0 to infinity of r e to the i theta to the m. Now we can use the geometric series formulae which we've actually discussed several times on this channel. We're going to be using the fact that if we start n from 1 to infinity of x to the n um, it's going to be equal to x over 1 minus x, started at 0. It's going to be 1 over 1 minus x. These are both valid for absolute value of x less than 1, of course. We are not going to really care about convergence issues in this video since this is going to be a more physics style of math. Um, just some interesting facts about this series here. You can easily generalize this. If n starts from any value k to infinity, um, it's actually just going to be x to the k over 1 minus k. x, sorry. So you can put x squared up here, x cubed up here. So basically, if you want to get rid of the first few terms, you just have a higher power of x on top. It's good to know for the future. All right, let's evaluate these series now. Uh, the first one is just going to be r e to the minus i theta over 1 minus r e to the minus i theta. Second series is just going to be 1 over 1 minus r e to the i theta. And now we can do the usual trick when dealing with complex numbers and multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of, of each, or rather in this case we're just going to put them over a common denominator and it'll result in a similar cancellation. So the first one times this denominator and plus one times the second denominator over their product and now we're going to take a side note and evaluate the denominator. So, when we multiply this out, 1, and we're going to do the cross terms. We have this cross term and this cross term. So they both have a minus sign. And the final term, these two terms multiply. Well, the minus signs go away r squared and these exponentials cancel. 
we can recognize this as two times the cosine function. This should start to look familiar for anyone that's taking the E&M. So now we want to simplify the numerator. We see that a couple terms cancel. This term here, r e to the minus i theta, actually cancels with this term. So we get, uh, you know, one minus r squared here, since these two are going to cancel again. We have our final result. This is the form that you would usually see the kernel in. It's the closed form of the kernel, which we're going to write up here as one of our main results of today's lecture. Uh, the main feature is if you wanted to evaluate an integral of theta, it'll be a lot easier to evaluate it than with the sum. You have to do it term by term. And now let's look at a second form of this. I'm going to look at a complex form as well. The easiest way to see this equivalence is to just start with the uh, complex function in, in question. So we're going to consider the following function, 1 plus r e to the i theta over 1 minus r e to the i theta. Just one minus sign of difference, but we'll see that this is related to the kernel that we just derived and is um, related to its complex form. Let's just start by rationalizing now, see what we get. times the conjugate of the denominator. Of course, we are assuming that R is real here. And, and E and M, R would actually represent the position of some electric or magnetic fields. Of course, it's, it's going to be real. All right, that's the numerator. The denominator looks familiar. Right, so we see that the denominator is the same one that we had up here actually, so we can just write down what that is. The numerator, we see, multiply it out one this time. We're gonna have r times a opposite sine cross term. We're gonna have e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta, which should look familiar to you. And we get a minus r squared again over the denominator. And if we recognize this as uh, two times the, two i, sorry, two i times sine of the angle theta, we can now write this result. One minus r squared over the denominator. And there's an imaginary component, two r sine theta over the same denominator. So we can recognize the Poisson kernel P R of theta as being the real part of this expression. Why would we want this? Well, let's go ahead and look at the two cases that we uh, derived. We would use these cases if we had, for the first one, integral some function of theta real function times 1 minus r squared over 1 minus 2r cosine theta plus r squared. And if we had a complex function, write this as, we take the, the real part of the whole thing. We had some function of e to the i theta, which is also common if you want to use complex numbers instead of real numbers. Take, put the real part on the outside, complexify it, and then write this.
And we have the same variable everywhere, so it's possible to use further changes of variables to simplify your formulae. And hope you enjoyed this short presentation of a few equivalent forms of the Poisson kernel. Please subscribe. See you next time.